Hi, I'm Connor Wilson, the publisher of LaxAllStars.com, where our mission is to grow the game. Coming into season two of String League, we wanted to set the bar a little bit higher and really give you an example of an optimal pocket, something that's above par. We decided to pull together four stringers. All four guys are gonna combine their efforts to come up with one great pocket. We thought it was important to create an example of a great pocket. Now this might not work for me, it might not work for you, but this is a general kind of concept heavy pocket that should allow anybody to kind of string up that above average pocket that everybody wants to string. I'm gonna be stringing the top string in this pocket. Obviously it's the first string that goes in on most pockets, so it's incredibly important. You wanna make sure that it's tight. I'm only gonna use one string, keep it nice and simple, but make sure that it gets the job done. All right, when you're putting in your top string, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need a lacrosse head. You're gonna need a piece of mesh. We're using Jimalax soft mesh. And you're also gonna need a long piece of string. You're gonna put a knot in one end of this string. I like to use a double knot. So I'm gonna make a loop and then go around that loop twice and then pull it through. I find a double knot is a little thicker than a single knot. That really makes a big difference in terms of uh, the knot not slipping through these outside holes. I like to usually use my top one or maybe my second hole uh, to attach it to the side to start off on my mesh. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go from the outside, I'm gonna use this second hole down and pull that piece of string through. Now I'm gonna put the head down, pick my mesh up. For mesh, you've got usually a nine diamond row and a 10 diamond row. I like to fold this nine diamond row over, which makes the mesh a little bit stronger. It's a little bit easier to attach it to the top of the plastic that way. Now there's a lot of debate about whether or not you should use the rough side or the smooth side of the mesh. If you feel it, you'll notice there's a difference. Uh, honestly, some guys use the rough side, most people do, but I've seen players use the soft side too. So I don't think you wanna discount that as a possibility. So once you have your nine diamond row folded over, it's doubly thick, you're gonna place that with the folded over portion on the back of the head, like that. Now I'm gonna take this piece of string, the long end, and I'm gonna go through the front of the mesh out through the back, and then back around through the outside of the plastic like I originally did. Then I'm gonna go back through that same hole in the same direction that I went through the mesh. And that creates a little circular loop right here with the mesh on the inside of it. And then I pull that tight. It's cool, it actually creates this little notch right here. Some people call it a bunny ear, but if you've got this thing sticking up through this hole, then you're on the right track. Now I'm gonna pull the mesh over a little bit and see where the mesh aligns with the next hole over. So for here, it lines up really nicely with this hole. So I'm gonna go through the back of the mesh first and then through the front of the scoop. Now if you just pull that, it just makes this, it does pull it up tighter, but you wanna create a loop here. So pull a little bit of slack back out and put this through that loop that you created with the slack. Now it's really important for me, spacing. Spacing is key when you're doing a top string. So you wanna make sure that this highest notch, this V, this chevron, this upside down chevron is gonna be in between this knot and your next knot. So originally I went through the mesh and then through the front of the scoop. Now I'm gonna go backwards through the back of the scoop first, then through the front of the mesh, and then I'm gonna create that loop again and tie that down tight. So what that creates is this highest point of the mesh is locked in to this knot, which means it's not gonna go anywhere. Now I'm gonna skip a row of mesh. You could attach it here. I like to only attach four. It's really personal preference. But again, I'm gonna go back through the back of the mesh, through the front of that scoop, and through the loop. Again, I'm making sure that the highest part of this V that the mesh creates is in between this first knot and then this second knot where I go through the back of the head and through the front of the mesh. And again, you're locking that in there. So it's nice and tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. That also helps with spacing, which is really important. If your top string is off center a little bit, it can get you in a lot of trouble because that ball is just gonna slightly hook off to the left or the right, wherever you made a mistake. So now I'm again, I'm gonna skip this fifth hole of mesh and go through the back of the sixth hole making sure that that's locked in through the back of the plastic and through the front of the mesh. 
I'm gonna skip another hole and get my final top string set of loops done. Each time I put in a knot, I make sure that the others are tight before it. I don't wanna have to go back and try to pull extra looseness out of this if I can avoid it. Now, when you wanna finish this off, you're gonna finish it the same way that you started, except you're gonna go through the back of the mesh, through the inside of the si second sidewall hold down and pull it through. Then take the string around, go back through the back of the mesh and back through that same sidewall hole, which will again give you that loop. And you're looking for that bunny ear, so make sure that that bunny ear is sticking up like that and then you can pull it down tight. Then put a knot in it and that's your top string. You're done, good to go. When you're done with this, you definitely wanna make sure that you've got these little bunny ears sticking up. These pretty much mean that you've pulled your mesh up tightly. It means that it's gonna be uniform and consistent across the top. So as long as you have equal bunny ears on both sides, it means you probably did it right. For these knots, I really like to make sure that this highest point of the mesh is inside of this knot. Uh, that means that you're gonna have good spacing, it means you're gonna have good tension, and it means that the knots aren't gonna slip back and forth on you. On this side where I started, I had a double knot. And you can see on this side, I only used a single knot to finish off. A lot of times that will work as, as the loop makes uh, this hole a little bit smaller, so you don't have to worry about it slipping through quite as much. But if you can put a double knot in, I do think it helps, and it's gonna guarantee that your string is never gonna slip through that hole. You really want to avoid having a loose top string. You'll notice that even the drop top or Iroquois top strings, even those are pretty tight. So it's very important because that's where the ball is finally releasing from your stick. And for me personally, the last thing I want is to have that ball click off the plastic. So I like to make sure that my top string is very tight. All right, so we've got the top string done. We're gonna throw this over to Joe from Throne Lacrosse. Thankfully he's in Brooklyn, so there we go. Joe's gonna tackle the top third of the sidewall portion. Very important portion of your pocket. That's where you're getting in a lot of tension. That's where your channel is really being created. So Joe, a mastermind of mesh, is gonna try his hand at showing you how to do it right. String League starts up February 2nd. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you check out the rest of this preseason for all you String Leaguers out there showing you how to string a great pocket. It's gonna be awesome. I'm Connor Wilson from WaxAllStars.com. Come on over to our site, check out all the content we got going on. You'll be happy you did.